Bob, I'd like to ask Bob Chapman a question about the offshore accounts in the Cambrian Islands. And I'll tell you why I'm asking. Um, Robbie, you know I've been talking to you off air uh, six weeks ago about removing myself out of this position. I have a, a silver certificate, and to get a, a full idea of it is 10,000 ounces. Last week, um, it was going to uh, cost me over $30,000 to get out of it. Now, I called a company in Vancouver to try and get away from Scotia Makata, which is a company in Canada. And basically, they turned around and uh, they would say that they could do that with 1,000-ounce loaves, which I'm not impressed with, but they would uh, do an offshore count in uh, uh, the Cambrian Islands. And I'm looking and saying, no, 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 no. Now, even my, um, we turned around, and I don't know who this John was that called you guys up to debate about the gun regulations and the silver availability three weeks ago. His name was John out of Washington, and he had a company or something. I don't know if he ever got a hold of you, Bob. But when he turned around and said that uh, they turn, they have a premium of $2 on the silver maple leaf, um, I was quoted out of Canada, right across from Vancouver to uh, Newfoundland, uh, three dollars and fifty cents. That's thirty-five thousand dollars. On bullion bars up here, it's two dollars and fifty cents. Now, Robbie, Plus, hang on a second, Dave. Robbie, yeah. explain the retail versus the spot. And I, and I think what John was giving was the spot on the silver, not Plus. what he would sell it for. No, he was going for spot plus the uh, um, yeah. premium, the two dollar premium. Okay. Spot plus two dollars and fifty cents. Okay. Right. Which so, is which is a standard premium you're going to pay um, in the U.S. for American gold eagles, uh, silver eagles. Silver eagles. Right. Correct. Well, he was saying two dollars. Uh, on your archives and even on the show here, he was uh, charging, uh, he said he had pallets of uh, yeah. silver leaves and stuff, and he was charging $2 over spot, yeah. and there was lots of them, but um, I'm saying, uh, no, that's not the truth. Up here, uh, they're charging 250 on bullion uh, per ounce and 350 on uh, silver maple leaf. Yeah. Yeah. You talking? You talking two dollars and fifty cents on rounds? Uh, no, on bullion. Yeah. On bullion bar. Uh, bullion, but he's talking about straw oh, coins. Oh, you talking? You talking about hundred ounce bars? No, no. He was talking ounce, ten ounce, twenty ounce, fifty ounce, hundred ounce, five hundred ounce. But they have a special premium on thousand ounce bars, which is only sixty percent proof, at two dollars, up in oh. Canada. Okay. This was just uh, yesterday at 2 o'clock, 17th of August. I got all the prices here, and uh, basically that's, you know, we're looking at $9,000 for uh, 1000 and right now they're trying to push through that uh, they're not interested in selling uh, silver leaves, you know, one or two coins. They're only interested in the 500 jumbo pack, yeah. and they're talking $9,000. And for 5,000 ounces, it's going to cost you 100 grand with taxes and shipping. So, uh, having said all that, Dave, what are you going to do? <laughs> Wish that you guys would turn around and get a, a link or a branch office in Canada. No, we, we can use the Underground Slave Railroad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, sir. Done. Call. I'll talk to you off air. <laughs> we, won't, we, we won't tell them what route we're taking. Oh, there you go. Uh, no. You know, you know, it's funny. Uh, in Sandusky, Ohio, along Lake Erie, when I was a kid, uh, I started getting into the history of uh, that area, and uh, I remember walking down the old slate sidewalks. And every once in a while, you'll hear your heels would click, and it would sound kind of hollow. And I often wondered, well, you know, what did they dig for sewage or gas lines or whatever? No, I found out that the Underground Railroad ran through Sandusky, Ohio, and that's the Cedar Point fame there on Lake Erie. Uh -huh. um, there, there was Great. the place was rich in history. Uh -huh. It ain't rich no more. It's... It ain't rich. But um, how safe? 
like this company I called out in Vancouver. Now, I don't know if John's a part of it, the guy who called up on your show, but how safe is them to turn around and say to Canadians, well, look, at, we'll get you out of your paper, but um, because of tax implications, we'll uh, use an international account over in the Cambrian Islands and yeah. put your account with a 1,000-ounce loaves. Well, only, you know what, you know what I've always said about this. If it's not within reach, it's in other not words, worth anything. it's not worth anything. But I, I'm wondering, if you put it down in the Cambrian Islands, I don't even know where that's at, yeah. could you put it someplace else? Could you transfer it someplace else? I, I don't know. Is it, is there, Actually, I want it in my back pocket. It, it, well, it would be kind of hard with 1,000-ounce bars, but I understand your point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the only thing is, I've found out a rude reality that uh, basically <laughs> uh, Scotia McLeod or Scotia Makata, uh, what they're selling for paper isn't what they uh, tell you. And like you know, Robbie's always said, education costs you big yeah. time. Yeah. And for me to cash this stuff out and have it in my back pocket, yeah. it's going to cost me anywhere from two to 3,000 ounces. All right. Dave, I appreciate your call. Thank you very much. Yeah, Robbie... Um uh, how many clients, and you've dealt with a lot of them, how many clients have called you up and said, you know what, you people didn't do a good deal? Or even you, you never get these complaints. Why is that? Um, because we give good deals. <laughs> We've only had one little glitch, which I'm happy to inform everybody. Um, all clients have received everything that they uh, ordered from the former uh, company called National Gold. Uh, and, and we appreciate that. Uh, there was a lot of mix-up there. And it was one of the largest houses here in the United States. And they made good because we told them. I said, hey, look, uh, we don't make much off of this. You guys got the money. And don't expect me to put up the funds because they're locked up in some kind of bankruptcy thing. That ain't going to fly. So yeah. you, you worked with the people over at uh, NGE. Got everything sorted out, and that's been the only glitch that I am aware of. Well, NGE is no longer um, in business. It's now the Phoenix Gold Corporation. Oh, out of the ashes. Out of the ashes. Well, right. they, they should have parked it in Scottsdale. That's pretty close to Phoenix, and they should have let you run it. Yeah. There would have been a whole lot more satisfied people. All right, 800-313-9443. We'll take your calls. We'll return in just a couple. Boy, does that sound Rush Limbaugh-ish. I like that music. At any rate, Robbie? Yes, sir. Deal of the day. Deal or no deal? Yeah, we got a good one, because these ones are tough to get hold of. Uh, Swiss francs, the 20 franc. It is regarded amongst the most beautiful coin ever minted. Uh, they were first struck in 1492 and were known worldwide as a universal currency. Um, they contain 0.1867 ounces of pure gold. Uh, these are brilliant uncirculated, $215 a piece, order 20 or more, $4,300. Receive a free year subscription to the International Forecaster or an extension, or if you already have one. And uh, take advantage of this dip. It's a it's a, a great gift. Once again, we've been given with gold down below uh, 940. This is only a matter of time before it starts climbing back up again. Gee, I wished I had 4,300 bucks. I'd call you myself. Yes, understand the problem. Yeah. Um, hmm. By the way, um, I wanted to get into this Paul Krugman deal. No. Yeah. Uh, Paul Krugman. Uh, well, we'll get into that next hour. Uh, we've got uh, just enough time here to squeeze in a couple more calls. Clarence in Oklahoma. Hello, Clarence. How's it going, John? Hi. Uh, I just wanted to make a, just a brief comment about this uh, whole health care reform thing. And uh, I'm of two minds on this, even though I'm, uh, I consider myself a libertarian. I don't want the government running the health care in this country. I worked for them for 32 years and three years in Uncle Sam's airplane fraternity. 
of 35 years. I see how they run things. I've seen it from the bottom on up. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, it'd be like uh, uh, after way some of my postman act, I don't think I want them messing with my medical care. But. Uh-oh, there's the but. Something has to be done. The status quo is not going to work. And I'm not prepared to say what, because I don't know. But I'll tell you this. There is one thing that they've shown, these statisticians. 